Hi. Uh, so I'm here to talk about navigation system design at Uber. Um, my name is Katie, uh, katie at uber.com. Feel free to drop me a line, questions, comments. Um, and I manage the cartography team at Uber. Um, teeny bit of background, I uh, sort of slid sideways into the mapping space. My background is actually in uh, 3D modeling and animation. And I was asked to build some custom 3D landmarks for Apple Maps in around 2011. Um, if you actually zoom in and pan around in Apple Maps, you'll probably see a lot of buildings that I built, including an Easter egg in Emeryville, California, at the coolest company in Emeryville, California. So if you find it, let me know. Um, and then in 2015, I joined Uber. Uh, this is a picture of me and my colleague Janice and our awesome PM, Robin, who's here today. Hello, Robin. Um, this is my first NASIS, so I'm unsure how often navigation systems are discussed. I know Ecta gave a great talk yesterday about navigation, um, but I really wanted to come here and tell you about um, how we built Uber Nav. Uh, so this is it. This is the story of Uber Nav. Um, this is going to be from the design perspective. If you want any of the technical details, you can talk to Michael and Vince, who are sitting right there. I'm going to put you on the spot. <laughs> All the technical details. Um, so I'm going to talk about um, some early concepts, working with the data, style considerations, asset considerations, um, camera and dynamic nav concepts, and then the UI wrapper. Uh, so some early concepts. We began in fall 2015. Um, these are hand-drawn in Sketch, which is a design program similar to Photoshop and Illustrator. Um, we, what we wanted to do was sort of test out different camera angles, which is literally like the view that you're looking at your map. We wanted to test out different label styles. We wanted to test out different pucks. And the puck is what we call the arrow that tracks your location as you're driving. Um, and what I like to do is I actually put my phone on my desk and I screencast from Sketch to be able to like really see what it looks like on a device. Um, so as you're designing, that's a really uh, useful tip. Uh, so while we were doing all those concepts, we were also working with the data itself. We were um, building a multi-zoom global uh, uh, vector tile set using uh, TomTom data. So as the people in this room know so well, a map is made up of so many layers. Um, and in around fall 2015, our map looked like this. Even if I wanted to style city labels, I couldn't. It wasn't even in the tiles. Uh, so we worked together, went back and forth on what we needed for our particular use case. Um, and then later, it started to look like this. This isn't the final final, but you can see finally we've got city labels, boroughs, neighborhoods, borders, ferry lines. Now we're getting somewhere. Um, so we were also working on the styles themselves, the layering, the orders, uh, how they appeared. Uh, we went through so many different variations of like a beige and a green and a blue, cooler, warmer, um, and finally landed on this sort of fresh palette here. Um, and we had to test the styles everywhere. Uh, Uber is everywhere, so we had to make it work literally everywhere. Um, and we ended up sort of collecting this, these like locations that were really excellent places to test our styles. Um, these are the actual lat longs and elements. Um, and I'll share this later. You guys can look at them. Some of the places are really interesting to me. Uh, like, you know, br bridges overlapping, tunnels overlapping, parking lot roads overlapping buildings. And you have to make sure your style works for that situation. Or you know cities that are really gridded, so the labels are like beautiful, and then cities that are really organic, and the labels are a mess. Or cities that are mostly water, like Amsterdam, so you have to make sure your water value like works in that situation. Um, so feel free to check out these locations. I'm obsessed with them. Big fan. Um, and then once we finished day mode, we had to switch to night mode. Um, night mode is uh, not just to look cool. It's uh, an actual ergonomic hazard. Um, imagine you know, you're driving for four hours and you have like a blinding map in your eye the whole time. Um, so we really needed to make sure we provided this to drivers. We tested out all of these options here. We were sitting in a dark room um, and we landed on this option. A little hard to see on the screen, but we ended up uh, testing this in person as well with drivers at night to make sure it was legible. Um, okay, now I'm going to talk about some asset considerations, specifically POI icons and shields. Uh, we built a really simple set of POI icons um, to capture like the most important categories. Um, and this is uh, with our own uh, Uber Places data. 
Uh, and the cool thing about working at Uber is that we know what places are popular. We've been able to figure that out. And so this is a test. It's a really rough screenshot where we were trying to figure out if popularity was an OK signal for display. Um, so if you're familiar with San Francisco, this is places that are popularity medium and up. Um, and like, it's actually decent. Most of these parks, excuse me, these are parks, by the way. Most of these parks are the parks you'd expect to see on a map of San Francisco, with a few exceptions. Um, and then this is showing popularity very high. And again, if you're familiar with San Francisco, Chrissy Field, Golden Gate Park, Dolores Park, those are definitely the ones that you'd expect to see on a map. So it was really cool to see that popularity is an OK signal for um, displaying places. OK, now I'm going to geek out a little bit and talk about highway shields. Uh, I've shamelessly stolen this from my colleague Oliver Lookman, who's based out of Amsterdam. He did all these slides and all this work. Um, I love it so much, that's why I'm presenting it to you today. Uh, so how do we build an actual highway shield or road shield? Well, we start with the letter M because it's wide and square shaped. And then we build a digit bounds around it. That way you can be confident. And then all of the artwork is drawn around that letter M and the safe bounds. Uh, we have three different sizes, a small, a large, and an extra large, and potentially up to eight lengths. Um, there's shields all over the world. Some of them literally are eight characters long. And then we have a concept of custom shields and then default shapes. And we literally grassroots researched all across the world places that we thought maybe should have like a custom hand-drawn shield and then places that we thought would be fine with just a shape. Um, and the shapes themselves, we just sort of like collected a catalog of shapes that we felt would represent the world. Um, and then we developed a system of connecting the shield type to the shield shape to shield colors. And that saved us a lot of time drawing all these shields. We could do it in a more automated fashion. Um, we also couldn't auto position the text glyphs. So we de developed a way to just give it a, like a, a border that would push it, a padding. Um, so here's like a few examples. You can see Colorado and Alaska. There's a padding that influences where the text glyph will be placed so that it's like perfectly placed in the shield. Um, and then we really wanted shadows to like pop it off the road layer just a little bit. And we wrestled with SVG exporting. It was like maddening. And we finally came up with this technique um, where we're literally duplicating vector shapes of a certain transparency and it like simulates a shadow and it exports cleanly. And we were happy with that. Um, so if you consider that we have about 65 different shield backgrounds by potentially three different sizes and potentially eight different lengths, that is like possibly 800 individual assets, which is non-trivial for one person to be organizing. Um, but Oliver's amazing, and he developed this technique of drawing them in Illustrator, which has really strong vector drawing tools. Um, and then literally copying and pasting them into Sketch, design program I mentioned earlier, um, and Sketch has really excellent exporting tools. Um, so this is an example of some of the slices in Sketch. They're perfectly named, they're all laid out, and you can instantly export all of your shields um, really cleanly. Uh, so yeah, and that lets us do stuff like this. This is Taipei, Taiwan. Um, you can see the National Highway Shield there, which is that beautiful flower shape that I love so much. Um, and then the red guitar pick, that's what I call that shape, and then the blue guitar pick, and then the default shield. Um, and just as a reminder, we did not draw a red shield and a blue shield. We drew a black and white shield that then was colorized automatically for us. OK, a little bit about camera. Um, navigation is uh, not fixed. It is moving. You can pinch and zoom your map. You can switch from overview to first person. Um, so what I'm showing here are GIFs from actual uh, drive tests that we did in Boston with real drivers. Um, we did about like seven uh, international test sessions, um, many of them led by our awesome design researcher, Christine Tao, where we were literally like putting it in front of drivers and saying, can you use this? And I'm not sure if you can tell from these GIFs that no, they couldn't. So we changed it around a little bit. Um, and then what I'm showing here, if you, sorry, these are crazy test gifts, but if you look at the one on the left, um, you can see the labels, road labels are just all over the place. And then if you look on the one on the right, um, road labels are tightly and neatly uh, aligned with the route line so that you can see what roads you're passing. Um, and that is much better experience for navigation. Okay, and then it all has to work together with a UI wrapper. Um, UI being user interface. Um, all these elements have to come together in something usable for drivers. 
Uh, so here's an example of some of the UI considerations that have to be made. Um, I could have a whole talk just about arrows. Uh, and then we have address strings of one line, potentially up to four lines. Address strings are really unpredictable across the world. In fact, I had an Uber driver this morning whose address string was five lines. Not great. I'm probably going to file that bug. Um, and then it all has to work at night as well. And this work was done by Janice Suji and Bo Adam Mawai Mawataya. I always mispronounce her name. I'm so sorry, Bo, if you're watching. Uh, okay, and then we put it all together. What does it look like? It looks something like this in the daytime. And it looks something like that at night. And here's some video taken by Robin and Janice of me driving around town using it. That was a fun day. We got to drive over the Gold Gate Bridge. Um, yeah, so that's my presentation. You can find it at katie.design slash nasus2017.pdf. Uh, feel free to take a look. Check out those lat longs. Some of them are co really cool. Um, yeah, thank you so much. Any questions?